I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. The January 6th committee held their second public hearing on Monday. Ben Ginsburg, a conservative attorney for former President George W. Bush's 2000 campaign, testified before the committee. During questioning from Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, Ginsburg said, quote, there was no credible evidence of fraud produced by the Trump campaign or his supporters. Listen in for the California Democrats' full line of questioning. Um, the courts in our country uh, provide a legitimate venue for campaigns to challenge what they view as irregular election practices. Now, courts have the final say on how the law applies to those challenges. We have a renowned legal expert here to address the Trump campaign's activities in court. Mr. Ginsburg, you've spent your entire career representing Republicans in election-related litigation. You served as the National Council on Republican Presidential Campaigns in 2000, in 2004, and in 2012. You played a key role in the 2000 Florida recount that led to the Supreme Court's decision in Bush v. Gore. You served as the co-chair of the Presidential Commission on Election Administration. I think it's fair to say you're the most prominent Republican lawyer who's litigated in the election field. Now, you've analyzed the Trump campaign's litigation pretty uh, carefully. What's the like normal process for post-election litigation? How is the Trump campaign's different from the kinds of post-election litigation you've been involved in and know about? In the normal course of things, any campaign on the night of the election and in the days after will do a couple of different things. One is that they'll analyze precinct results to look for abnormalities in the results, and they'll send people to those precincts to ask more questions. Secondly, uh, all campaigns will have poll watchers and poll wor workers and observers in the polling place. And so campaigns will talk uh, to those people if they saw any irregularities that could cause problems in the election. Now, the Trump campaign talked pre-election about having 50,000 poll workers. So presumably, they did have eyes on the ground in all these places. And so in the normal course of things, a campaign will analyze the reports that come in. Trump campaign had a couple of basic problems, however. Number one, the 2020 election was not close. In 2000, that was 537 and close. In this election, the most narrow margin was 10,000 and something in, in Arizona. And you just don't make up that, those sorts of numbers in recounts. And when the claims of fraud and irregularities uh, were made, you've heard very compelling testimony from Mr. Stepien, from Matt Morgan, from Alex Cannon, about those claims and how uh, they didn't believe them. And so that put the Trump campaign on sort of a process of bringing cases without the actual evidence that you have to have in which the process is designed to bring out. So are you aware of any instance in which a court found the Trump campaign's fraud claims to be credible? No, there was, there was never that instance uh, in all the cases that were brought, and I've looked at the more than 60 that include more than 180 counts, and no, the simple fact is that the Trump campaign did not make its case. The Select Committee has identified 62 post-election lawsuits filed by the Trump campaign and his allies between November 4th, 2020 and January 6th, 2021. Those cases resulted in 61 losses and only a single victory, which actually didn't affect the outcome for either candidate. Despite those 61 losses, President Trump and his allies claim that the courts refused to hear them out. And as a result, they never had their day in court. Mr. Ginsburg, what do you say about the claims that Mr. Trump wasn't given an opportunity to provide the evidence they had of voter fraud? Did they ha in fact, did they have their day in court? They did have their day in court. About half of those cases that you mentioned were dismissed at the procedural stage 
uh, for a lack of standing, the proper people didn't bring the case, or there wasn't sufficient evidence and it got uh, dismissed on a motion to dismiss. But in the other, there was discussion of the merits that was, that was contained in the complaints. And in no instance did a court find that the charges of fraud were real. And it's also worth noting that even if the Trump campaign complained that it did not have its day in court, there have been post-election reviews in each of the six battleground states that could have made a difference. And those ranged from the somewhat farcical cyber ninjas case in Arizona to the Michigan Senate report that was mentioned earlier, the hand recount in Georgia uh, that Mr. Pack addressed. And in each one of those instances, there was no credible evidence of fraud produced by the Trump campaign or his supporters. Thank you. You know, as Mr. Ginsburg has explained, there are no cases where the Trump campaign was able to convince a court that there was widespread fraud or irregularities in the 2020 election. Over and over, judges appointed by Democrats and Republicans alike directly rebuted this false narrative. They called out the Trump campaign's lack of evidence for its claims, and the judges did that even in cases where they could have simply thrown out the lawsuit without writing a word. You can see behind me a few excerpts from the decisions in these 62 cases. The Trump campaign's lack of evidence was criticized by judges across the political spectrum. In Pennsylvania, a Trump-appointed judge concluded, quote, charges require specific allegations and proof. We have neither here. Another Trump-appointed judge warned that if cases like these succeeded, quote, any disappointed loser in a presidential election able to hire a team of clever lawyers could flag claim deviations from election results and cast doubt on election results. The list goes on and on. Allegations are called, quote, an amalgamation of theories, conjecture, and speculation. In another, strained legal arguments without merit, unsupported by evidence, derived from wholly unreliable sources, a fundamental and obvious misreading of the Constitution. The rejection of President Trump's litigation efforts was overwhelming. 22 federal judges appointed by Republican presidents, including 10 appointed by President Trump himself, and at least 24 elected or appointed Republican state judges dismissed the president's claims. At least 11 lawyers have been referred for disciplinary proceedings due to bad faith and baseless efforts to undermine the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Rudy Giuliani had his license to practice law suspended in New York, and just this week, a newly filed complaint will potentially make his suspension from practicing law in DC permanent. And as we've just heard from perhaps the most preeminent Republican election lawyer in recent history, the Trump campaign's unprecedented effort to overturn its election laws in court was a deeply damaging abuse of the judicial process. As stated by U.S. District Court Judge David Carter, this was, quote, a coup in search of a legal theory. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. I want to thank our witnesses for joining us today. The members of the select committee may have additional questions for today's witnesses, and we ask that you respond expeditiously in writing to those questions. Without objection, members will be permitted 10 business days to submit statements for the record, including opening remarks and additional questions for the witnesses. The second panel of witnesses is now dismissed.